I think we're at three o'clock. Um, uh, so welcome everybody. Um, are you exhausted? Because you should be, because we're all on Zoom. Um, and many of us have been on all day, and some of you were just with me a mere half an hour ago in the session about how to use Zoom. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. This is actually going to, I'm not going to do um, any screen sharing or anything um, uh, unless, unless we have a need. Um, but here's the most important thing for you to know. When you finish the session, or I won't be insulted if you do this at the same time, um, go back to the, um, to the Summit website and go to this session and download the Zoom guides that are attached in my session. Um, those are the most recent Zoom guides that the Tremaine Foundation and Artists Thrive have put out. Um, the brand new one is smoking hot, literally, um, Heather sent it to me this morning. Um, so uh, it, is, it is hot off the presses, but um, my name is Beth Flowers, and I'm the director of the AIR Institute, and I do a lot of online programming. Um, so I'm hoping that one of the reasons that you're here today is to think about um, either your own online programming or to think about the meetings that you've been having um, and how to maybe make them a little bit more pleasant. Um, so if, if you were in my session last time, I'm sorry that I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record, but it's a really important record. Um, this is a really hard time. And um, part of what is so challenging for us is that we're seeing people like this. Um, most of us um, hadn't been using Zoom before now. I feel so fortunate that I had been using it for the last couple of years because I do a lot of regional work. And so I had started to build up my muscle memory about how to learn how to be online and how to read um, other people online. Um, one of the hardest things in my experience, and I, I would even say in my life, is this new way of trying to become empathetic and connected um, in a very different way than we're used to. Um, so I know you all are experiencing that, um, but then there's this other thing that we just need to start talking about more and more because our administrative sides and our leaders need to hear this message, which is that one of the reasons we're having Zoom fatigue issues is because we have too many meetings. Um, so Zoom fatigue doesn't, you know, is not as bad when you're doing something that is meaningful to you and that is where you're learning, where you're engaging, and all of those things are really possible. Um, however, um, most of us were actually really unhappy with our job meeting life before COVID, and all we've done is amped up this awful thing where we're having meetings, but now they're even harder because we don't know how to relate. So the rules are a little different. Our, um, our psyches are different. And also our anxiety levels are way higher right now anyway, because everything sucks. Um, and, <laughs> and yes, it's okay to say that out loud. Um, so I just want to encourage you that this Zoom break is as much about giving yourself permission to say no to some things. Um, yes, I'm going to share with you some fun things to do on Zoom. But more than that, I think it's important for us to have a conversation and um, some chatting about the reality that we're facing right now. Um, I find that for me as an arts administrator and a leader, that it's really helpful to give other people that permission as well. Um, and the more we can model good behavior that says we got to take care of ourselves, and that means not just yourself personally, which is A, number one, but also that we can't take care of other people if we aren't taking care of ourselves. And the reality of our um, emotional state going up and up and up, just when we think we couldn't possibly have another change, um, we've got another one. And yet, for many of us, we're in meetings where none of this gets acknowledged. And um, we're expected to just show up 
and pretend like the world is not um, feeling really fragile right now around us. So um, this is your um, pep talk to say, please, um, talk to people, talk to your people about the, the reality that we need to check back out um, and check in with each other. So um, one of the things that um, I want to share with you are some of the things that I've done in the past six months because I do a lot of online work. I run a lot of workshops um, is to say that we start, if, if I'm working with a cohort that I'm going to work with for multiple sessions and for sure if it's a short experience, um, the, the faster you can do an actual check-in with each other, the better. Um, when we get into these kinds of programs where we've got lots of people on, we've got 20 people on Zoom, we can't do a check-in that's meaningful um, because it's too many people. We wouldn't do that in real life, so it doesn't make sense for us to try and do that right now. But there are some cool tools that you can use um, along the way. I can't show you one of them, but I really like it. And the reason I can't is because of the way the Zoom system is working, I can't, I can't um, show you the polling function of Zoom. So if you all um, have not done so, please make it, um, put it on your to-do list to do the latest updates of Zoom. Um, so they are doing regular updates to their software, but you have to do the update. They don't do them automatically and they also don't tell you. So here's the quick tip. Um, if you are using, um, when you first went to Zoom, you probably were told through a computer that you needed to download an app or some sort of um, uh, client link. So if you're using that, um, and you get a you you have an app that you click on and it brings you to a white screen that has a home button and you have back to meeting join schedule share screen um, in the upper right hand corner of that white box you'll see um, yourself you'll see your own icon click on it and you'll have options for your settings um, your profile and there's a check for updates button you'll want to click that if you aren't using this app. Um, or you don't know how to access it, you probably are using it and you just don't remember that it downloaded onto your computer, go to zoomus.org and log in with your user account. And again, across the screen um, at the top in the right, you'll see an icon for yourself, click on it, it'll have those same things and you can get those updates there. Um, the updates that are, um, are important today, because we're talking about Zoom fatigue, is that there's a bunch of fun stuff um, that they've just added, including um, uh, some things that some of you, how many of you have done the update? All right, just a couple of you. So I'll show you where you will get. Um, if you um, look at the bottom of your Zoom screen right now, you should see a mute button and you should see a little arrow next to it. Um, when you click on that arrow, you'll have options about what you can use as a speaker, testing your microphone, and other audio systems. You'll get more um, options when you do the update, but if you click on the stop video or start video um, button, you should get choose virtual background. And if you've done the update, you will also get choose video filter. And the video filter allows you to do this. It allows you to give yourself a beret. It allows you to put yourself in lights. Um, you should be able to see this. Um, and frankly, a little bit of fun goes a long way in a Zoom meeting. You can see that I am baffled by this um, uh, experience. So there's also some new studio effects um, that allow you um, to add a mustache and beard. Um, uh, you can add your lip color. Um, I feel like I'm really getting crazy here, y'all. Um, so I'm going to stop it all um, and move back to none, I'm hoping. All right, we're good. I'm back to normal. Um, that's obviously sort of a fun thing that you can think about doing with your team when you're in one of those meetings that is going on way too long is to just take a break and say, okay, let's all put on a funny hat and have a moment. 
Now, um, that is not for everyone and it's not gonna work for um, an important meeting for sure. Um, but uh, I encourage you to try and use these kinds of things just to bring some levity into our lives. This is a little bit of art um, that is goes a long way. The other thing I wanna um, make sure that you know you can use is I am gonna share my screen briefly by putting up a whiteboard. Um, if you share your screen, um, you should get multiple tabs when you click on share screen. Um, click on basic and you'll see that you can share your desktop or whatever you have open on your desktop. Um, that's also where you would want to click at the bottom on the left hand side of that pop up box is share computer sound. That helps if you're going to show a video. It also helps um, make sure that there's clarity when you show that video. But there's an advanced um, tab when you do that update and um, that allows you to share slides as a virtual background, which is fun. And also you can do a DJ moment. You can share um, just your music so that you can have a background of music playing while you're talking and everyone can still talk over it. But um, back at that basic thing, <clears throat> you do, or sorry, in advanced, uh, where is it now? Why is it not letting me see that? Um, you can share a whiteboard, except that I'm not allowed to because apparently I'm not allowed right now. Um, but normally you can. And that whiteboard is really super powerful because um, not only can I write on it, I can type on it, there's a pen, you can change the colors, but here's the really cool thing. When you as a participant are logged in and you're, someone shares a whiteboard, if you click on the, um, at the top of your screen where it says share screen, um, uh, you can actually all write on that whiteboard together. Um, it's super cool, it's fun, it's engaging, and it's another way to think about a brainstorming moment. And because you can type in addition to draw, um, it can be a little bit more meaningful. Um, when I'm doing um, really uh, more, advanced brainstorming work and for some of our workshops, we're using mural.co to do um, design thinking and brainstorming. Um, it's an app that you can pull up um, within Zoom and it has the ability for you to post pictures and videos all when you're working to that together collaboratively. So it's really a fun way to be engaged with each other. Um, and the other um, uh, shout out I want to give out to um, having some fun and thinking about how you can sort of re-energize a meeting is Kahoot. Have, have any of you used Kahoot? Cynthia has, nobody else has. Uh, yes, yay! Um, uh, so a few of you have, this is awesome. So some of you may know that this is, um, you may have heard of it because it is used in education, um, K through 12 education a lot. Um, and it is essentially a gamification moment, um, where you can check in with people. So you can do quizzes. Um, it is a nice, quick, easy thing. Um, when, um, when we're working with our um, presenters and they're working on a presentation about their projects, um, we recommend that sometimes they use a Kahoot in order to check in with their audience. So it's just another tool um, that you can use. It plays music. Um, and, and again, it just sort of like breaks up the moment. But um, what I want to do, because we're at the end of Artists Thrive and we don't have much time left, is actually get as many of us on the screen who want to, to share what are the things that you are doing to stop your Zoom fatigue besides saying no um, and acknowledging that you've got to um, give space for people to have a life. Um, rather than imagining that all of our meetings are the same. So who has some great tips or an experience um, that they want to share? Margaret Mary. Um, I just have done a few things and none of it's as complicated. I've written down the things you've said, but for example, I used to do three to four hour uh, strategic planning sessions all the time. And what I'm doing now is redesigning them so that we do them in an hour, an hour and a half increments on more than one day. 
and I design it so they have time to think about what's the first piece so that it can impact the next day or two days later or whatever. And I also have found that the breakout rooms are extremely valuable in that people in a much smaller group will talk a whole lot more, but I think it only works if you appoint one person who's kind of in charge of the breakout room. Otherwise, it takes for everybody's, nobody wants to start, it seems like. So, um, and then what they, they know the rules and everything um, and accomplish it really well that way. I just find that I have to redesign how I have done facilitations. Um, it, it, that's been the biggest key to my to me being successful with it. And I have used the background things like I'm like in out floating in outer space and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of fun for a while. Yeah, we in the last session we talked about um, exactly these kinds of tips and tools about how to run a meeting. Um, and for sure the breakout rooms what I what we generally now do is we try to have um, small groups that are no larger than eight ever um, certainly smaller is way uh, is great but no more than eight people in a group what we also do um, and, th and this is what adds to the fatigue sometimes besides cutting down the amount of time um, is to actually have more facilitators so um, we always have a facilitator in a room with a group that's working, but here's our tip. Um, turn the video camera off of the facilitator and mute yourself so that you're there and the team knows that you're there, but they can actually bond and start to work together as a facilitated team, um, but you're there to answer questions. Um, so we sort of joke about it that it's the voice of God that steps in <laughs> um, on occasion when your facilitator's there, but it also allows the team to still bond and not feel like they're being led, which for a lot of the work that we do is really important. We want people to be learning to manage themselves and learning to lead themselves without needing um, outside facilitation. So those are great tips, Margaret Mary. B. Hi. Um, I have two things to share. Uh, one, um, I led kind of an interactive ritual experience, so it's more of an artistic experience, but what we did for that was we uh, shared the screen with like a beautiful visual like video thing, but then we invited participants to use the annotate tool. So similar to the whiteboard feature, um, they could, we asked, we asked some guided questions and then people could anonymously share their answers on this moving background. Um, and it was really beautiful and really fun. And also as, as a facilitator, you know, I had the power to clear the board when we had finished that question and things like that. Um, but it was a nice way to get anonymous responses because I think sometimes it's hard when your name is attached to the chat or to your video and you maybe want to bring up something anonymous. Um, annotate tool is a great way for that. Um, and then the other thing in just like general meetings that I've noticed, um, I find it really welcoming and helpful when it's just verbally acknowledged at the beginning of the session that we're people and if you need to go to the bathroom and if you need a drink and if you need to, you know, whatever, that's fine. That just acknowledging we're in our homes, there's kids running around, there's whatever going on in the background. Um, I think even though we all know that, something about calling it out verbally, I think makes people more comfortable, at least for myself, turning on video or engaging or feeling like if I really need to go do something else, I can for that moment. Um, and also reminding people that there's virtual background. I, I forgot, even though I know it, but I forget about it sometimes. And if I'm in a room with people running around in the background or the lighting is weird, you know, that's a great way to be able to be visible, but not feel like I'm providing extra distraction or exposing too much of my life, right, to the world. So um, yeah, those are things that I add. Those are awesome tips. Thank you so much for sharing. Those are fantastic. Who else has some ideas or thoughts or questions? Cynthia. So you guys, those are all great. Everything's been really, really good here. Um, I've been teaching a craft entrepreneurship class that we had scheduled to be a real in-person class, and then we had to quickly transfer it to, um, I think, it, it, to a virtual class. And one thing that we discovered, I'm co-teaching it with another artist, and one of the things that we discovered um, 
during the first class is we realized that a lot of the talking time that we were going to use during the class, it became, it was too much. And so we started, we have a Facebook group for the participants and we've started recording um, their Facebook live videos, but we've told them very quickly, we just, we don't expect them to be on them when they're live. They're just live because we're not going to edit them. And if we do them as Facebook live videos, we feel like we've taken the burden of editing off ourselves. <laughs> Whereas if we recorded them more professionally, we'd have to act like we were going to edit. Um, so we record a lot of our instructional dialogue um, in advance of the class on these Facebook live videos and have it there for people. Um, and then going forward for our next session, which is going to happen in January, we've gone from three hours over eight weeks, three hours, one night a week over eight weeks to two hours, one night a week over 12 weeks, just giving, you know, it's sort of a similar amount of instructional time, but it breaks it out. And like Margaret Mary was saying, like, it's just too long, even with multiple breaks, three hours was just too long. Yeah, I think it's really going to depend on your cohorts and the size and the kind of work that you're doing to find the sweet spot. We have not had a problem with three hour um, meetings for our programs, but we have two very distinct breaks and much of what we do online um, is in small groups so that they're having a much more intimate conversation. It's not just a talking head. I think that's what sometimes really puts the super fatigue in, is it's just like, you feel like you're talking to nothing. Um, I feel so fortunate. One of my jobs um, was working for a radio station um, uh, out in Colorado. And this, and this feels sort of like that. You know, a lot of times, most people haven't had that experience where you're talking into what feels like nothing. Um, but realizing that people really can feel that energy shift um, just by the way that we hold ourselves, the tone of our voice, um, it's incredible how much that matters. But I, I totally encourage you. What we do is we survey after every program now, um, our participants, and we, and we remind them that this is a pilot that everything is always a pilot now um, and that we can't get better and meet their needs if they don't give us feedback. And so people are generous with their ideas and with their experience and that really helps us um, cue into what the changes are that we need to make. We haven't done anything um, that, you know, every class it seems like we learn something new um, uh, along the way. So who else? It looked like maybe Jim was ready. Yes, Jim McKee. McGee. Oh, Jim, we can't hear you. It looks like you're unmuted, but I don't hear any sound. All right, Jim, while you're working on that, did other people have something that they wanted to share? Oh, wait. Check one, two. Hey. Can you hear me now? Okay, I clicked microphone on the carrot there. <laughs> um, well, so I'm, I'm a musician. I'm also a uh, social worker therapist. And, um, and I, I do a monthly singing circle, uh, which will be this Friday. And... Um, we, we used to do it in person, but then we took it online and we, we ask everyone to mute their microphone and then the person who is leading the song will uh, have their mic, mic live. And then uh, there, there's, there's like a two second delay between there. So, so when you, if everyone is, uh, has their mic on, it sounds like, a bunch of people who are drunk trying to sing together. <laughs> and, I almost did a spit take there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I found that if I if I picked a like a a blues song and did it very very slowly, that it that it worked that way. You know that that if if you have a number of people who sound like they're being they're drinking and they're singing the blues. It sounds okay, <laughs> so that that worked. But you have to play it very, very slowly, and then you have to stop and wait for people to catch up like that. Um, but but most of the songs are are muted, and 
we do a screen share uh, to put the lyrics up there so that everyone can see the lyrics. Um, and then I, I have shared a video off of YouTube uh, of like, you know, a jug band in Louisville, Kentucky performing a song back in 1926. And then we do that song um, in the singing circle after they see kind of the, the old footage of that. Um, and um, I don't know, th those are some of the things that have made this, that in a singing circle, we tried some song games. And um, I don't know, but the people didn't like, the, 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 they didn't work. And so we kind of had to scrap that. That was kind of hard. And the, the person who was leading those, you know, just didn't, didn't want to do it anymore. So that, you know, we, we had to pay attention to what was working, what wasn't working, and then go with what was, and be willing to scrap what's not working. Which, um, which is such a great um, message for all of us to remind ourselves too. I know I said this in my last session too, is that we have to just get more and more comfortable with change and the reality that we're going to try things that aren't going to work and that that's okay. The only way we can get them right is to try them at all and to take that risk and to try the game that doesn't work. Um, and the more we can encourage people to feel okay with that space too, is going to help our artists and creative folks continue to innovate. So it's a bummer, Jim, that that person who suggested it now is like, I don't, you know, I, I feel bad. I don't want to participate in the same way. But we can't, you know, we can't solve everybody's problems. But the more we can encourage people that this is going to happen and remind them that it's okay, I think helps set the stage and allow for more playful, um, wonderful uses of this tool. Because I will say, Jim, this is such a great example of what is fun about Zoom right now. I mean, um, I encourage you all to go to the lounge um, at the end uh, of the day today. We have been having an awesome freaking time in there. We're dancing, <laughs> we're having right. fun over there. Um, my husband and I have been playing Yahtzee with my mom um, over Zoom because she, she can manage that. Um, and uh, that, you know, that the realizing that there are fun ways to think about this technology, because um, as much as I hate to bring this message up, this is not going to go away. And um, we've got at least another year um, where this is going to be a part of our lives. There's no way that we're all suddenly going to be vaccinated. Um, and have enough safety that we can go back to the world that we've experienced. So in some form or fashion, we're going to need to use this tool and we're going to need to get better at doing self-care so that we don't burn ourselves out on it either. Um, who else has some other ideas? And ooh, how to play Yahtzee, um, it, you just play it. <laughs> um, I, I have one thing to share. Um, Please. We, um, we have, we've used it a lot of times with putting music to like our break times. Um, and so the class is really like that and they'll, they'll even give requests um, about like, oh, we, you know, we listened to like uh, Bill Withers last time. So we want to listen to the Black, you know, the Black Keys or whatever. Um, and that's been really helpful, especially in the classes. Um, so one thing that I've realized I said in one of our first evening programs is like if the energy in the evening is totally different. If you do like programming like in the afternoon or night, it, it's like totally different than doing it during the day. Um, and so that was going to be really key for the facilitator to like just keep people's attention through um, the time frame. And the other thing that I've seen that's been really neat is people using the video function and the, and the reactions functions. So one thing that we put into our most recent class was um, to like, you know, there are a couple cl places where they could say yes or no by turning the camera on or off. Um, or they could use different reactions. So like one, one exercise, there's like three different choices they could make for the, the facilitator is going to ask the question and there's three different answer choices. And so we would use three different reactions um, that you know, that they could have so that, yeah, exactly, so that you could easily see how everybody answered. 
Um, and then, you know, the facilitator could easily have a conversation or pick a couple of people if there was like, in this case, if, if the answers didn't match, there was a discussion point. Um, but for the facilitator, it's a lot easier than like trying to scroll through the chat or asking everybody to speak out loud because you see all of those things immediately. Um, and it just saves a bunch of time. You and do that fun. too. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, we, and we sort of go old school for some of what we do too um uh to do exactly that which is okay which category do you fit in which reaction do you want to put up and or use the and use the real peace sign if you're both um so don't you know don't feel like you can't use some of the tools that we used to use i know monica has a question um go ahead and and ask monica i know we're about to run out of time but. I know. yeah on time um, thank you. This is a great session. And it's not a question. It's more of a comment, really. And talking about going old school, I'm also such a great proponent of remembering we have a body and we have a nervous system. And how do we invite ourselves and people on the other side of the screen to keep returning to the body and to the breath? and into our bellies again and again and again, because I think this is talking about Zoom fatigue and, and you know, online fatigue. For me, it's so important to sometimes just like take a breath and come back or uh, do some um, visualization exercises with, 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 my, with my classes or uh, yeah, just invite people to break out of the trance of technology because all said and done you know we don't want to think that this is the only reality that is out there we need to kind of remember we are embodied beings that's awesome and i know we're at the end of time but just to um pull you right into that moment i also encourage you all to try and do activities with people that are safe that are in person um, the more that we can model good behavior that is using masks and distancing, but that is experiencing art and ourselves together, in addition to this, will help all of us get better at this really strange time that we're in. So, you know, try those crazy events that seem like they're not going to work, but they do because everyone is so hungry for connection. So, have the concert in the park where you paint circles. We have done that in our neighborhood and it totally works. And, you know, it doesn't need to be expensive. Pay your artists, pay your musicians, um, but make sure that they're free for people. And that again, the expectations are clear that you've got your mask on, you know what the social distancing rules are for the event. But then that makes your time when you're online even more meaningful. And, and I do, I think Monica, you bring up such a good point and, and B too, stand up. Um, I know uh, uh, we were ordered to do that, but now what we're gonna be doing is ordered to get out of this room. <laughs> I can tell, I hear the, the cane is ready to pull us away. Um, so it was awesome. I hope this was helpful and useful and please don't forget to say no and to put our empathy out there for for people and remind ourselves that we're human and that this is a hard time and that we need that that moment for connection all right see y'all in a few minutes at the closing session and then in the bar <laughs>